Welcome to Tree Doctors. I'm your host, John Passmore. On today's program, we're going to watch Ed Dickey put a tree back together here in Forest City, Arkansas. We're also going to go into southeast Missouri and all over the area. Stick around. Tree Doctors is going to begin right after these messages. The Tree Doctors at Dickey Tree Service can inject a zap back in your tree's sap. Research has showed that ice damaged trees are stressed, and stressed trees lead to insect and disease attacks. Micro tree injection is the answer for your trees. Micro tree injection is a closed system, delivering the exact dose of systemic chemical directly to the sap stream of the tree. Once the problem is identified, the tree doctors at Dickey Tree Service can inject vitamins, minerals, or insecticide directly into the sap stream of your trees. This bypasses the roots and provides immediate results. Micro tree injection has been university tested and field proven for over 35 years. After the tree doctors at Dickey Tree Service treats your trees, you receive a written one year guarantee. We won't treat a tree we don't think we can help. Let the tree doctors at Dickey Tree Service put the zap back in your tree's sap. Let's go out in the field with Ed Dickey, the head tree doctor of Dickey Tree Service. We're going to take a look at some old trees, some big trees, and tell you how you can take care of your trees. We've had a couple of emails and a letter uh, asking us how to handle vines that's on a tree that when they want to get them off. Well, in my years of dealing with these, uh, I found if you want to remove them, uh, don't try to cut them and just pull them off. Uh, that's very difficult because the vines are attached to the tree while they're green and it's pretty tough to do. I found it's easier to come in and just cut them off, drop down about a foot or two below that, cut them again, use your shears or be very careful, use a chainsaw, pry that one section that you've cut out so you've got a bare spot. The vines above it will die and after a couple of months and they've died and they've lost their uh, adhesiveness to the tree, they're easier to pull out. You can easily monitor the, not letting the vine get back up there in that bare spot by keeping that snip back. And that keeps your vine in control and uh, keeps them wearing yourself out trying to tug on those vines. They're much easier to remove once they've died and they don't have the attachments to the tree like they once did. So if you want to get your vines off there, that's the way to do it. Cut you a blank spot and just let nature do the rest and, and then pull them out. I'm uh, here in Forest City with John Houseill, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about this hackberry tree he's got. He's got a bad insect problem, the aphids and other insects. Uh, they've, uh, the honeydew from the, their droppings stain these leaves, and you get a black on them. And uh, what did you think when you first started uh, remodeling and uh, trying to refurbish this uh, property you bought, John? Well, we originally thought that this was mold on the leaves. Uh, we have a lot of veg vegetation up against the house, and it was holding water. And so we just we assumed it was mold. It's, it's on the holly bush and all the lower vegetation as well. Right, uh, and uh, like I pointed out, even on this monkey grass here, uh, now you can get a combination of the mold going on at the same time, but when you've got the insects dropping, uh, mixing with it is a sticky, waxy, and it actually si shines in the sun is one way you can tell it. But on your leaves, you can take a little water, and uh, it'll clean right up. You can actually take a little soapy water and your little sprayer and, and, and clean up your leaves. Of course, that don't help your bugs. you still got to treat them, but you can make your tree look better. Uh, but he got rid of his mold and uh, mildew problem around it, and uh, he had me treat this hackberry, and we're taking care of the insect problem, so next year he shouldn't have this uh, dark staining and ruining his monkey grass and his hollies, and uh, uh, I think uh, we'll just come back and we'll just see how it looks next year, John. All right, man. Thank you. Uh, on a past episode of, or two of the show, I talked about those Don Redwoods, and uh, here I've got some. I bought uh, 12 or 15 of these a year or so ago, and... Uh, we use a product on these uh, that we developed called Plant Power Plus. You pour it around the base of the tree and uh, keeps the trees going. 
doing wealth, vitamins, minerals, and enzymes. Uh, once these trees get big and established, I'll have them move to different areas in a proven area, and uh, maybe in a year or two, you'll see what happens uh, with a lot of these trees. Uh, had very good results with them. They went through the ice storm and came back good. They was actually bent over to the ground there with ice, and uh, the uh, Plant Power Plus helped them recover, and uh, they're still maintaining a, a viable crown, and uh, it's got a good stem, and they should turn out to be good specimens in future years. Uh, we'll keep you posted on that. But this is a young Don Redwood, and uh, it's a great tree. Kind of looks like a cypress, and uh, you might want to check it out next time you go to your nursery. I'm here at uh, in the park at Porsche and uh, with uh, city employee Nick Evans, and uh, he was out here doing the grounds. And uh, Nick, what uh, extra pains do you take when you're uh, weed eating and stuff around these trees? Well, I try not to hit the trees or get into them. I try to be as careful with them as I can. I try to stay out away from them. Right, and these are some old trees, Nick. This whole park is just full of old, a lot of old trees. It's a beautiful park, and uh, you, you've you been doing a good job keeping them well kept, and uh, I've been noticing the base of the trees doesn't look damaged. You, you've been doing a good job. We try. The The mayor, he, he makes sure we keep them up right and treat them right. Well, he's doing a good job. I want to thank you for taking a minute to talk to us. Okay, thank you. Uh, here we have a persimmon tree. There's a lot of them scattered around Missouri and Arkansas both. And um, the time of year is getting here where the uh, ripe persimmon starts falling on the ground. And uh, you can make jelly out of them, pies or whatever. They taste pretty good. Good sweet taste to them. There's a seed in these. I think if you'd watched the program before, the where the lady at the Hunter Dawson house told us about the spoon and fork and stuff. Well, after a little bit of difficulty, I chomped down on one of them seeds and sp uh, spread it open, and uh, this one here's got a spoon in it. So we're not worrying about a bunch of knives, so it's evidently it's going to be a, a decent winter. It's not going to be real bad. So we'll let uh, the weather tell whether this is a good forecast for us or not. I'm here in Porsche uh, visiting with Doc Graham. He's a... Uh, uh, dirt hauler around here. He has been for over 30 years, and uh, he hauls dirt and gravel and chat and, and whatnot. And I wanted to ask his, uh, his opinion. We've had a lot of people ask us how much dirt to put around a tree when they're building up our lawn and stuff. And uh, Doc, over the years, what's your thinking on the dirt around trees? I don't think I'd put over a couple of inches, two or three around it. I think you put even more, it might kill it there. Looks to me like, in <clears throat> my experience, Right. I guess over the years you've seen people that uh, put too much in uh, their trees going and die. That's right. They get get too much in there, it'll kill them. It will. Right. And uh, you say two or three inches will uh, at a time. And what? How long you wait then before you put any more? Oh, I'd wait. You know, four or five months, probably or something at least like that. So in other words, a gradual rise to the yard as opposed to just dumping it all in there. And that's what I'd do. Yes, that's right. All right, Doc, I appreciate your uh, thoughts on that, and I know if uh, if anybody knows what to do, you're the dirt man, you know what to, how to answer it. Thank you for talking to me. Okay, thank you. I'm standing beside one of the biggest ash trees in the state of Arkansas, if, if not the biggest, it's one of the biggest. Uh, it's right here in Clover Bend here in Lawrence County. This uh, cemetery has a lot of the old trees that uh, date back to the early 1900s, and big historic trees and they preserve this uh, cemetery and, and take very good care of it and uh, it, the trees show it also. Uh, great place to show respect and uh, some beautiful trees. And uh, seen this ash tree and I just had to say something about it because it's a great tree. I think you'll agree. I want to talk a little bit about a weeping willow. Uh, not a regular willow now, that's a weeping willow. You can see how it weeps around me. Uh, this homeowner here has made a nice little, got a bench and plants and deer underneath it. Just a place where I guess where they're working on the yard, they can sit down and take a load off, meditate, whatever they want to do. They can really enjoy their yard this way. And that's what a yard's for and your trees, uh, enjoy it. And uh, over the years, uh, I've treated a lot of willow trees that had problems. And uh, this one here is doing fine. But if you get a problem, we can straighten out that weeping willow. Enjoy them.
2003 has been a real bad year for the uh, caterpillar fall webworms. You can see here the uh, webbing, and I'm uh, here with Dorothy Mason, and um, she had a spray for these um, yesterday. And Miss Mason, uh, here's a day later. And, uh, have you checked and see if we've done any good? Yes, it's. I think they're all gone. I not don't see any crawling around in there now. Yes, ma'am. They're uh, they're difficult to kill, but uh, our spray, you know, penetrates the webs, and it's uh, yeah. Uh, no, he's dead. He's just blowing in the breeze. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it dries them up, and uh, at uh, before we sprayed, that was just uh, crawling alive with just uh, fall caterpillar webworms, and our uh, like I say, the web is difficult to penetrate, uh, but we got to spray to handle that. And if you have that problem, uh, uh, like Miss Mason did, she's got some walnut trees here as well as she's got some other trees in the yard. And uh, she had us uh, do a total canopy uh, application on them to take care of these. And um, I think the proof's in the pudding, don't you, Miss Mason? I sure do. I sure think it's got them. All righty. Well, and that's your fall caterpillar webworms. And 2003 has been a, a bad year for those. Miss Mason, uh, uh, tell a little bit about uh, about your trees. Well, I value these trees pretty highly, and I want them taken care of. And I think what you're doing is going to be great for them. Uh, yes, ma'am, and I love the statement you'd made a moment ago, You uh, uh, talking about your daughter and stuff and enjoying your trees. Uh, what was it you said? I said I want them to be here for her when she's here because I know that she'll appreciate them, and, and uh, we just need to take care of them. Yes, ma'am, and uh, they're truly your family trees, and I uh, uh, appreciate you letting us uh, help you take care of them. And you do such a great job with your flowers, and uh, your green thumb looks like on just about everything you touch. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they say. You've sure got a green thumb. Yeah, you sure I do. Try. I work at it real hard. Well, you can tell, and uh, you enjoy your yard, and uh, I'm, uh, I know the, you enjoy your trees that's in your yard. Yes, I do. I sure do. This is a hawthorn tree. Uh, it's the Missouri State tree. You can see the thorns on it. And uh, uh, Miss Mason, uh, uh, tell us a little bit about this tree. How old is it? Oh, I think it's about probably seven or eight years old. Yes, ma'am. And uh, did you say you ordered it from a seed catalog? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. And uh, you hadn't? Did you have to give it any extra care or anything, or just uh... no special care? I just planted it, and it grew. Right, and I'm sure the birds love it. and Yes, they do. And with the thorns on it, it kind of keeps uh, predators out of it, you know, on its own right. People kind of stay clear of it, and so they don't tear your tree up near as bad. I believe it. That's sharp. Them things are sharp thorns on there. Yes, ma'am. Well, I appreciate you showing us your hawthorn tree. Okay. Thank you. You know, you might wonder how in the world a tree could get to be this big and still be in this good a shape? Well, the answer's simple. This tree's had care over the years. Sitting in the school grounds, it gets regular maintenance. Had a little bit of care I was talking about. Your yard trees can be like this tree years from now, but they gotta have care today. Take care of your trees. I'm here in Forest City at the home of John Houseill, and um, he's got a big old elm here, one of the largest American elms that's uh, still around this part of the country. And uh, we recently treated it for John. John, how'd you hear about us? Well, I heard about y'all uh, through a man named Daryl Lilly. He was refinishing the floors in this house that we just purchased. And we just recently bought this house, and I noticed that this tree here uh, was kind of in bad shape. It had more, didn't have quite enough leaves on it, and it had more... Uh, seen more limbs and left sleeves and my dad noticed that it was an American elm right. and he explained to me about how the American elms have just taken a pounding and there aren't too many old ones left and that's exactly right and uh, especially as large uh, and majestic a tree as this and uh, I just tickle you uh, let us treat it for you and uh, it's hopefully it's going to be here for many years to come also, I'd like to mention you've got a lot of trees. These trees are kind of in disrepair over the years around your house. Uh, and uh, I gave you some tips kind of on how to fix those. You've got a little vine problem. Yeah, we have a lot of, a lot of work to do on the vines. It's kind of gotten overgrown. The, uh, the uh, former owner of the house had died some years back, and 
and just the vines have really kind of taken hold and they've grown up the trees a lot. Right. Well, I told you about how to handle that and you can uh, uh, help this one by devining it a little bit too. And uh, in case people missed uh, an earlier uh, segment of the program, you can cut the vines up uh, at a convenient place, jump up another couple of foot and then tear that little section out and let the top part die and it loses its attachedness to the tree. It makes it easier and not quite as labor intensive to remove those uh, when you do that. And uh, I told John how to do that. And I think as he's gonna do that, uh, and it's, it's cool that uh, this used to be the family tree for, of course, the owners, and uh, now it's uh, your wife and yours family yeah. tree. Well, we're hoping it'll stay around for a lot longer. I think it's already quite old, maybe over 100 years old. But I believe you're exactly right, and uh, maybe a few years on down the road we might touch base with you and you'll see how this, uh, your uh, redoing of the house and the yard and the trees are in uh, our big old American Am's coming along. Absolutely, Ed, we really appreciate it. Well, thank you for talking to me. All right. We're here at the home of Laureen Smoke in Carruth, Missouri. Uh, we're uh, soil injecting a dogwood here. It's got a bore problem. We're gonna take care of that. And uh, if you get a dogwood and the leaves start turning, getting brown on it, and uh, kind of looking a droop look, uh, check your twigs out. You'll see that uh, you probably got dogwood bore in there. Uh, we can handle that. That's what we're doing here in uh, Carruth. So if you've got a dogwood problem, we can handle that for you. I'm here in Kennett, Missouri at the home of uh, Dolph Riggs. he got a, an old wisteria vine that he's turned into a tree. And tell me a little bit about this, Dolph. The vine was here when I bought this property uh, some 15 plus years ago. And it has really been amazing. It grows so uh, continually each year, in fact, to the point where it has to be trimmed. Otherwise, it'll be out in the yard, but it does put on beautiful flowers, as you can see with this one, with the butterfly just ran off. It's, uh, it's beautiful flowers, and it's, it's a decorative uh, plant to have in your yard, but you will have to trim it a little bit because it will travel. Oh, yeah, and uh, you've, uh, it's actually made a, you made a tree out of it. You've got a nice arbor that it's on, and uh, so it, it's, uh, it's got a lot of age on it, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It has quite a bit of age to it, and I hope it uh, survives many years to come. You're doing a good job with it. Well, thanks for talking to me about it. Well, thank you. Appreciate you coming and taking a look today. We began this program at Forest City, and now we're in Jonesboro at the Craighead County Courthouse. We cover a wide area with Diggy Tree Service, and we'll be back with more on Tree Doctors right after these messages. Hello, I'm Ed Dickey, the Tree Doctor at Dickey Tree Service. I'm coming to you from inside of a tree. We've been getting inside of trees for 35 years. We get to the root of the problem. Give us a call. We know how to save your trees. We put the chemical where it needs to be inside your tree, taking care of insect and disease problems. We're often imitated, but never duplicated. We've been doing this 35 years. We know what we're doing. Give us a call. We're the tree doctor, Dicky Tree Service. It's not hard to see what killed these trees. It was boar worms. The boar is a hard insect to control, virtually untouched with spraying and other applications. But with systemic injection, when the boar eats the tree, the boar dies. Trees are dying all over, but we've got the cure. We give a one year guarantee when we treat your trees for the boars. We've been doing this 35 years and we know what we're doing. Give us a call. We're the tree doctors, Dickey Tree Service, in your yellow pages under trees. <laughs> I'm here at the site of one of the annual events in Jonesboro. It's called Rock in the Ridge. It happens every first weekend in October. And 20 bands or more get together every time for that on Rock in the Ridge in Jonesboro. It's a lot of fun. And there are a lot of great things to do in our part of the world. And speaking of things to do right now, I need to get back in the field with Ed Dickey, the head tree doctor of Dickey Tree Service. Here we have a plum tree that's uh, just being eaten up with boars. You can see the the jelly that's coming out of the, the bore holes and even on the trunk area here. It's got to this point where it won't be long before they, this tree is just it's overcome with the bores and it dies. Don't let your trees get this bad. There's things you can do. We can treat a tree and take care of it. This tree here is just 
to the point of it's going to be difficult to bring it back. It's done gone on so long. So keep eye on your trees. They'll tell you when they're sick. Isn't this a beautiful old pecan tree? Uh, we're here near Hornersville, Missouri, and uh, the people here, they operate a beauty shop right underneath the, this beautiful shaded tree. And several years ago, we got hit by lightning. Damaged the tree, we come in and treated the tree for the homeowner here and got it back on track. Uh, they got a beautiful flower bed going on around it and all these hanging plants. And, uh, about a year ago, they're starting to have a phylloxera problem on the, the branches. That's where the, they get the little knots on these pecan trees. It's a little gall wasp stings these and injects a growth inhibitor and causes these knots to form and the insects hatch and uh, they fly away from there. It uh, pulls the tree down and causes a lot of limbs to die and uh, we treated it for that and I stopped back by to see how it's doing. It's doing great and it's got a great nut crop on it. Uh, just because a tree's been hit by lightning or uh, doesn't mean you got to cut it down or anything. A little bit of care, uh, you can get your tree back in shape, keep an eye on your tree, uh, and you can keep it in shape. Here we have a crab apple tree. A lot of people plant these for the color, the uh, small little apples on them, birds like it. it. It's good color to your yard. Uh, we had a little problem out of it in years past with fire blight. Um, the tree will wall itself off from that, that's, uh, it's a bacteria canker that it progresses down the tree and kills the little terminal ends and it's spread quite rapidly if you don't dip your clippers when you clip those dead areas off. Um, so if you do trim on your apple or your crab apple or your Bradford pear, as far as that goes, uh, dip your clippers between each cut uh, with a solution of a little bit of uh, Clorox and water, about 25% Clorox rest water. Just put it in a five gallon bucket, parcel away full. When you do your clipping, dip your clippers in between each cut and you, you can prune out your dead areas you want to. This particular crab apple is doing pretty well. Uh, it's got a edible fruit. A lot of people don't know you can eat it. A lot of gels and jams are made out of this. Quite tasty. Um, but it's a good tree. Uh, a little bit of care makes it a better tree. You know, a lot of times we want to hang stuff from our trees. Uh, this homeowner here has got hanging baskets all the way around this tree, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Just don't forget uh, where you put these chains to let them grow into the tree. Just kind of keep your eye on them, and if they get too tight or choking off the branch or growing into the tree, move them. Just takes a minute and uh, enjoy your tree. Don't hurt your tree. That's a tip. Uh, we're here in Forest City at the home... Uh, Mike Easley, and he's got a large oak tree here that uh, past windstorms has busted pretty severely. And we're going to attempt to be putting that together here just in a few minutes. And uh, uh, Mr. Easley's here, and if he'll take a minute of his time, I'd like to ask him a little bit about the tree. Uh, Let's see, Mr. Easley. Uh, hey, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, this oak tree. Well, we moved here about 20 years ago, and it was a big tree then, and uh, it shades about half of our backyard, and we want to keep it. Yes, sir. I can see why it has a nice straight trunk, and it does shade a, a biggest part of your backyard. And uh, what made you uh, notice that bust up there? Well, unfortunately, I didn't. My wife did, and uh, she immediately called you to come out and see if we couldn't save the tree because it was going to ruin it if it uh, if it continued to split like that. Yes, sir. It's a pretty bad split, and we're going to attempt to uh, pull that booger back together and uh, put some bracing rods in it. And uh, I'll talk to you a little bit more uh, about right, some of the other the process. All right. Daddy phoned to tell us that old tree might have to come down. The one I had the tree house in and chased my wife around. He said a neighbor showed him. For it was busting at the trunk And if the snow got heavy It could crack down to the stump We got to save our family tree It's such a big part of our history What a nostalgic sight to see we got to save our family tree. Grab a 
Grandpa said they planted it when he was just eight years old. His mama kept the clods broke up while his daddy dug the hole. I phoned up a friend of mine that lives in our hometown. He said he knew a tree doctor didn't like to cut trees down. The man went out and checked our tree and bolted it back together. He said it would last a lifetime, no matter what the weather. We got to save our family tree. It's such a big part of our history. What a nostalgic sight to see. We got to save our family tree. Yes, we got to save our family tree. I'm here with uh, Tad Bocker. He's an operator with the White's uh, Record Service. And uh, I couldn't have done it without this big old record. Tad, have you ever pulled a tree together before? No, sir. I pulled a bunch down and a bunch up, but never together. <laughs> yeah, that was quite an experience. It took uh, put a load on that big record, didn't it? Yes, sir. It's a 50-ton tow truck, and it, it loaded it down. Right. Uh, the White Record Service has been around a long time here in uh, uh, yes, Forest City. Sir. Yes, sir. It's uh, been around since 1937. Family owned and operated at that. Yeah, they got good equipment, and I appreciate you coming out and helping us. We appreciate you calling us. Thank you. Thank you. I'm um, here. Uh, Still in Forest City with Mike Easley. We just pulled this big old tree to back together. You just seen the uh, met the record guy. And uh, Mike, what do you think of how the tree's looking? It looks great. I can't believe it. Uh, what an what an operation you've got here. Uh, well, you, it, your tree's worth saving. We put the extra time in it to do it. Well, it is. I'm I'm kind of grinning, I guess, because I'm happy to save the tree. It's a, it's a beautiful old tree, and you've done a masterful job. I told you before we went on tape that the tree's now got braces. <laughs> there you go. That's one way to put it. And uh, this will last. Um, you got a beautiful yard too, Mike. And uh, you're attorney here in Forest City, aren't you? That's right. Uh, what's the name of your firm? Easley Hickey and Hudson. Yes, sir. Well, if your firm's anything like your yard, I know you got a good one. <laughs> well, thank you a lot. Well, you've closed it up where you can't tell where the split was at all, so it's a fantastic job. Well, I thank you, and I thank, for, thank you for talking to me about it. All right. Thank you so much for joining us on Tree Doctors. I'm John Passmore for Ed Dickey. Now, if you have any questions, be sure and go to DickeyTree.com or call the number below. Ed will be glad to answer them for you. We'll see you next time every Saturday and Sunday at 6 a.m. on KAIT for tree doctors.